Hey guys, what's going on? So we have been looking at sprucing up our backyard lately, and one of the things that we're missing back there is a place to sit away from the sun. Uh, we live in the desert, so if you're not in the shade, things get very uncomfortable very quickly. Uh, we thought a good addition back there would be a pergola, so we shopped around for one, but everything that we could find was either too small, too flimsy, or just ungodly expensive. So we're going to save some money today and build one ourselves. The tools that we're going to be using are an impact driver and a drill, although if you don't have an impact driver, you can get away with just a drill, a jigsaw, and a miter saw, although a circular saw would be just as well. Uh, the hardware that we're going to be using is the Outdoor Accents line from Simpson Strong Tie. They're not sponsoring this video or anything, I just really like their products, I've used them for a long time. So uh, everything that I use, I'm going to link down in the description, so without wasting any more time, let's get going. The first thing I had to do for this project was to make some concrete footings to give the pergola a solid foundation. Since the pergola is going to be triangle shaped, I poured three footings, each with an embedded anchor bolt to attach the post to. They will also help hold the structure down to make sure our hard work doesn't end up in the neighbor's yard. Our area regularly sees winds above 50 miles an hour, so anything not bolted to the ground tends to wander off very quickly. I made a short video that goes into a little more detail on how these were made, so be sure to check that out if you plan on making your own footings. We had to make a big decision on what kind of wood we wanted to use to build with. We narrowed the choices down to pressure treated pine or natural cedar as both of these types of lumber are good for exposed outdoor structures. In the end, we decided to use pressure treated pine due to its cost and availability there are some downsides in working with this material, which we'll get to later. For some reason, cedar is extremely hard to get in our area and would have more than doubled the cost of this project. First, I placed a long board between the two front base plates to make sure they were parallel with each other. After marking the angle on each side, I attached the plates to the footings using a nut and washer threaded onto the anchor bolt. I like these plates because they have about a 1 inch standoff, which will help keep the water and soil away from the bottom of the wood posts. Once the front two posts were up, I marked the design for the decorative end on the headers using a template I made from a piece of cardboard. I'm terrible at cutting freehand, so a template helped me keep the ends of all the headers and beams consistent in their look. Cutting the design out was pretty straightforward, but since the wood was still wet from the treatment process, I had to use a can of air to blow away the sawdust that kept clumping up around the blade. I mentioned earlier that there are a few downsides to working with pressure treated wood, and this is definitely one of them. Not a huge deal, but makes the work a little more slow going. Strong tie hardware made attaching pieces together super easy. Being able to just screw everything together without boring holes for carriage bolts was really nice and made this process go much faster.
Here's an instance where this system offered some forgiveness. I forgot to leave space for the rafter hangers needed to connect the rear beams, but it was an easy fix to reposition the screw. A little more planning on my part would have prevented this though, but hey, what's a project without some mistakes? I used some more boards to help set the angle for the back post plate. Because of the triangle shape, the faces of the back post are at a 45 degree angle in relation to the front two posts. I cut a 45 degree bevel on one end of the rear beam and inserted that end into the joist hanger you saw a minute ago. This enabled us to use the flat face of the rear post to secure the other end of the rear beam. We repeated the process on the other side, and at this point we had the basic shape of the pergola. It was time to start placing the rafters, but I still wasn't sure how much of an overhang I wanted the ends to have. So I cut the end pattern to one of the boards, placed it on the beams, and adjusted it back and forth until I was happy with how it looked. I cut the pattern on the back side, making it to where the front and rear would have the same amount of overhang.
Working with a floppy tape measure on top of the ladder was a little awkward, so I made a spacer block to help keep everything consistent. I used the length of the block to space the rafters apart. I also made a mark on the block at 10 inches, which is how far from the beam the first cut of the decorative end starts. This little guy might have been the MVP of the entire build. Once I got in the groove, it was tons of measuring, cutting, more measuring, and more cutting. It's hot. I had a leftover piece of scrap, so I used it to bridge the middle of the triangle for some added strength. We paused the build here for about two weeks while we waited for the wood to dry so that we could apply the stain. Pressure-treated wood can absolutely be painted or stained, but it must be dry before you do. To test this, flick some water on one of the boards. If it beads up, it's still wet. If it absorbs, it's ready to go. After we got everything stained, we decided we needed to beef up the shade factor a little by adding some fabric between the rafters and beams.
I added some 1x2 strapping to the top for some added look, as well as to help keep the rafters from shifting around over time. Guys, thanks for checking out this video. I'm super happy with the way it turned out. I can't wait to add to it, make it look better. We've got a ton more builds planned for the future, so be sure to check back in and check those out, and we'll see you on the next one.